Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Welcome to another episode of Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability. Today I have two gentlemen with me. I'm very honored to have you both working on, in the community to help make it a better place, going evergreen, Pat Waite and Mike Alvarado. Um, and we met a few years ago um, and talked about having you come on the show, so I'm, I, I think it's great that you're, you're here finally. It's probably my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All good things in their time. Exactly. It's great that we're still around after what this economy's been through over the last several right. years. W well, that shows a lot for, for what your organization's doing. And um, you know, both of you, I, I know a little bit about your background. I don't know much about yours. So if you would share with the audience a little bit about you, what you, know, what you do in your spare time, you know, what you did to get you where you are now in your career, whatever well, you want to share. Usually that's on a need-to-know basis. But, <laughs> um, I'll, that's I'll okay. Don't share anything. That won't <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, well, no, I, so a little bit about my background. I'm a long-suffering long Cubs fan who had the good sense to leave the Chicago area with my wife in 1982 and migrated down to San Jose in 1984. And we've lived here ever since. I've worked for a variety of, of uh, technology companies as a finance executive. Uh, finishing at Seagate Technology as our Vice President of Finance for International Sales. Uh, so I've got a, a big background in big businesses, and, and, uh, but when I was a kid I started with the first Earth Day and I've been involved in ecological stuff ever since and that's how Mike and I got teamed up to get Going Evergreen going. The first Earth Day? The first Earth Day. In Chicago? 1970, yes. Interesting. Yeah. And what did they do at the first Earth Day? Uh, we cleaned up a neighborhood park. That that's was fun. That's wonderful. Yeah. I keep wanting to get someone to, uh, I think they do it occasionally, but um, where I live downtown San Jose, the, the, the creek, occasionally they clean it up, but I want to do it more often. So we'll have to maybe do an SV Tags Day to, to do that. Are. And Mike, tell us about your, your background and history and what got you to where you are now. So my family has been involved in public service for quite a while, my mother, but especially my father. And there was a tradition of public service <coughs> from Colorado on my mother's side, so from the 30s and 40s and onwards. And uh, when I came into my professional career, I was pretty convinced that I could combine my professional interest and my personal interest in the community. And so over the years, I've met a lot of people like Pat that actually have a uh, similar background. Even, you know, even if you look at where we're headed as a society, there's lots of ways that we could combine for the common good. And that's been a, that's been a touch theme. I, I've spent most of my career professionally in the product development and innovation area. So when I started to get into uh, some of the issues around planning for the future, uh, it really seemed to me it needed to have a much more of a local slant. So we came up with the idea of, of going evergreen really to try to take that community slant, community focus, and bring those needs and issues uh, to the fore. So that's really so that's kind, kind of, of a the guiding principle. So that's the basic concept of yeah. it and, and how it started. Let's bring up the p first slide now um, about, yes, and so is this one of your brochures then? Yes, that's right. This was our, our basic explaining to people what Going Evergreen is all about. And there's really these three focuses. The community is really at the center. It's about their agenda, it's about their interests. But then education is a very strong aspect because when we focus on young people and bringing them to a state of consciousness about the future, we can help them become sustainable in their habits, their buying practices, and their views of the world. And, and partnerships are another very strong aspect of how we've gone to market with this, uh, with this idea. So how did you guys come up with the idea? Like, it was it? <laughs> consortium was it well to understand the answer to that you have to understand a little bit about uh, suburban San Jose that we call evergreen and in it a lot of people leave evergreen every day and drive off to North San Jose or parts elsewhere for their jobs and some of the people thought well that's a pain why can't we get businesses to locate near us so that our commutes are a lot slower sure, that a lot makes sense. Yeah. shorter and so four of us sat down in my living room one spring day in 2008 and said 
what's it going to take to make that happen, and came up with kind of a holistic approach to a, to a community that would foster sustainability, and we believe that if we adopted sustainable practices, it would attract those kinds of people, and having those kinds of people nearby would attract businesses that relied on them for employees. So it's kind of a full circle approach to, uh, to uh, solving that problem of how to avoid having to commute up the peninsula to get the jobs from Evergreen. And was that 2008, you said? It was the, the spring of 2008. We, uh, were you commuting to Santa Cruz at that time with Seagate? Or? Uh, I was commuting to Scott. Well, no, I wasn't. I was done commuting then because I had retired, but I, I loved that commute. But I've Re Kind of a reverse commute, or it no? It was. It was fabulous. People were coming this way, and you were I watched getting the, the beauty over the hill. The, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I've commuted to Fremont, Sunnyvale, all over the place, as do many people in, in our area. Or San where, Francisco. Yeah, that's where the jobs are, and they're tired of it. So one of the guys uh, that helped conceptualize it, Steve Bucholtz, who, who worked up the peninsula, now has a job in the Hell Your Business Park. So his commutes dropped to 10 minutes, and, and we like to think that that's in part because of the efforts that we've, we've been doing to highlight the capabilities of the people in our community. And is that a walking commute or a driving commute? <laughs> uh, no, we, love, we live in the hills. It's a so drive. It's he of, uses yeah. a motorcycle, though. So he's, he's so and I guess um, Coyote Valley, Evergreen, Bernal, is it kind of all the same, or is it separate little pockets? Uh, there are different pockets. Coyote Valley is agricultural right now, undeveloped. That would be a reverse commute, which would also be good, because you don't have to slog up 101. Uh, Bernal is right at the bottom of, of Silver Creek Valley Speedway. Um, so it's quick and easy and to And that's get not to. considered part of the Evergreen then? Uh, no, it's kind of Silver Creek or Hellier, one or the other. Evergreen is, is kind of south of East Ridge Mall and east of 101. Yeah, so in my mind, I kind of thought of that as all Evergreen. And, I'm in, and I guess people, you know, it's so spread out that people, yeah. unless you talk about it, you don't really realize how you have all these little pockets. You have the downtown San Jose, different little pockets that are Nagley Park and Rose Garden and different Willow things. Glen and yeah, Willow right. Glen, which is San Jose. And people say Willow Glen, and it's, no, it's San Jose, <laughs> right? Um, so, um, and how did you get involved in this? Well, Pat and I had done some things uh, in parallel, and but we knew a lot of people in common. And so when Steve Buckholz expressed this idea, Pat said, oh, let's all get together. And I think that's really been the hallmark of how we've succeeded. There's very few barriers. We don't have a lot of status or any kinds of, you know, <laughs> conditions for how to participate. It's a matter of focusing in on things that need to get done. And then when we hear from the community, we have a lot of expertise. We had a tremendous amount of expertise in some of these areas. And even people in industry or the city weren't fully aware of how much information and capability existed in the residents. So when we took on these projects, 